This is a course about Lie groups and Lie algebras. And the point of view I'm taking on this is that this is a way of using tools from analysis and calculus to study groups and their representations. So we're going to focus exclusively on matrix groups in this course rather than the full generality of Lie groups. And the exponential function is one of the most fundamental things in analysis and calculus. So our first task is going to be to generalize the exponential function so that it makes sense for matrices. So how is the exponential function defined for numbers? Well, if I have a number a, then x of a, well, it can def be defined in several ways, but probably the most common is to say it's defined by its Taylor series. So it's 1 plus a plus a half a squared plus 1 over 3 factorial a cubed plus dot dot dot. In other words, it's the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial a to the n. And looking at this formula, this middle bit makes complete sense for matrices. You have to think about, about what each of the terms mean, but well, A is a matrix, we know how to add matrices. We know how to take a matrix to a power, we just multiply it by itself some number of times. And we know how to rescale a matrix by a half or a third or something, we just rescale all the entries by that number. So the only confusing thing is what is this number one? Well, there's a candidate uh, a candidate matrix that behaves like the number one, that is the identity matrix. So the only change I need to make to the usual definition is to turn that one into an I for the identity matrix. That is the matrix with ones on the diagonal and zeros elsewhere. So this is how we're going to define the exponential of a matrix. Of course, you need to do a bit of work to check that this sum converges for any matrix A. Uh, that work is going to be done in an additional video because um, I think it would otherwise distract from the main flow of ideas in the course. Um, and we're going to prove a bunch of nice properties that this has. But first, in this video, I just want to compute a couple of examples. So here's, well, maybe just one example. Here's our example. Let A be the matrix 0, minus theta, theta, 0. So to compute the exponential of A, we're going to need to compute all the powers of this matrix A and then add them up according to this uh, power series. So um, what's A squared? Well, if I multiply A with A, I get minus theta squared, uh, 0, 0, minus theta squared. In other words, that's minus theta squared times the identity matrix. OK, what about a cubed? Well, a cubed is a squared times a. And a squared is minus theta squared times the identity. If I multiply that by a, well, identity times a is a. So I get minus theta squared times a, which is then 0 uh, minus theta squared times minus theta is theta cubed minus theta cubed 0. Okay, a to the 4 is just a squared squared, so that's um, theta to the 4 times the identity. And a to the 5 is a to the 4 times a, so that gives us theta to the 4 times a which is then 0 minus theta to the 5, theta to the 5, 0, etc, etc, etc. So I'm going to stop there because hopefully the pattern's becoming clear. So the even powers are going to be plus or minus theta to the even power times the identity, and the odd powers are going to be 0, theta to the odd power, minus theta to the odd power, 0, or possibly with the signs uh, switched over. So let's write out what that gives us when we stick it into this power series, we get x of a equals the identity, that's ones on the diagonal, a, that's minus theta, theta on the off diagonal, and we get a squared 
over 2, so that's uh, half theta squared on the diagonal minus a half theta squared, and then um, we're going to get 1 over 3 factorial theta cubed in the top right, minus 1 over 3 factorial theta cubed in the bottom left, and then the next term is going to be uh, 1 over 4 factorial theta to the 4 on the diagonal, and then dot dot dot, hopefully you can fiddle in the rest of the power series. So what we've got here is a matrix whose entries are power series and they're actually familiar power series. So on the diagonal, the two power series we have are the same and they're both the Taylor series of cos theta. And on the off diagonal, well, in the bottom left, we have uh, theta minus one over three factorial theta cubed dot dot dot. That's, that's the power series of sine theta. And in the top left, we just have minus sine theta. So we started with a very simple matrix, 0 minus theta, theta 0. And we've ended up with a more complicated matrix, cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cos theta. And this matrix actually, you know, maybe you've seen it before. This is a geometrically meaningful 2 by 2 matrix. If you apply this to a vector in the plane, what you get is the same vector rotated by an angle theta in the anti-clockwise direction. So this is a 2D rotation matrix. And what we'll see later is that actually if you take any anti-symmetric matrix like this, 0 minus theta, theta 0, its sign changes when you flip across the diagonal and you exponentiate it, what you're going to get is a rotation matrix of the same size. So this is the two-dimensional two one, but you know you could get a three-dimensional, four-dimensional, five-dimensional rotation matrix by exponentiating a bigger anti-symmetric matrix. So the exponential function is pretty cool. It takes things that are very simple and gives you things that are very complicated and often geometrically meaningful. Okay, so here are some exercises, some pre-class exercises for you to think about. Uh, I want you to compute exp of a, where a is um, the matrix 0, x, 0, 0, and exp of 0, a, c, 0, 0, b, 0, 0, 0. So here, like theta, x, a, b, and c, they're just variables. Okay, so I want you to compute those two, uh, or at least think about how you might compute them uh, before class. And hopefully the uh, the calculation there will be easier than the calculation we've just done. And you'll, you'll see why if you do the exercise.